return. I pray we'll all be ready. There's no man know the day or the hour of his return. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. I pray that we give our hearts a search so we won't be playing church. I pray we'll all be ready for his return. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. honor to uh, Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to the shepherd of this house, Bishop Pendleton, First Lady Pendleton. Thank you, Jesus. Bishop, especially Bishop, I guess I'm going to say it this way, Pop Nelson, who have fathered us all. We thank the Lord for Bishop Nelson. He's got his son next to him, sticking his chest out. I want to thank God for this family. Amen that have been courageous to entrust this service in our hands. Let's give the Lord a hand for this beautiful white family, these children. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord has already preached. I'm telling you the truth. We just had this conversation yesterday. And look what God did. What do you think about that? <laughs> He's still in the saving business. Now, I don't, I don't doesn't really matter now what else happens because uh, evangelist Michael White is happy to see what just happened. Hey! Oh, he happy now. He can dance now! Ah! He can dance now! Oh, he can dance now. Woo! Mine, 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 mine. Hallelujah! Glory! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! He's dancing now. Woo! He picking them up, putting them down now. My God, my God. Woo! Hey, Amen. Listening to his Mickey speaking in them tongues as the Spirit of God give utterance. Listening to his Courtney stretched arms out wide speaking in tongues. Phil is speaking in tongues. Hallelujah!
and Elijah got his early. He didn't wait till the service today to get his. He already got his. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I am so excited about what God has done. You just don't want to know what it's taken to get here. But this family has been patient and supporting and, and look what God has done. And he didn't give you the Holy Ghost just to continue on. Now you got to let the Holy Ghost have you. Let the Holy Ghost have you. I, I, I thank the Lord. Amen. Let's give uh, the Lord a hand of praise for us for, for the lovely Cherie. Amen. She has been a blessing. And, and one thing about Elder White, he loved his children. I had to put up with him, seriously, teary-eyed a many day in our office for the last three years about you guys. Sad because he couldn't get to see his children. And he knew that the watches and stuff like that, and a little bit that he was able to send back didn't count for it all. But he loved you very, very much. And if I can be transparent, he, he was saddened, amen, that he didn't have the opportunity to spend all the years that he wanted to spend with you. And, of course, there uh, we had like experiences, amen, so I could relate to him. And I guess that's what helped us stay together so long. I could relate and feel what he felt without being in judgment. I could feel what he felt and was able to receive what God had given him. I don't know if y'all realize it or not, but National Evangelist Elder Michael White was a blessing to the body of Christ. Oh, yes, he was. Oh, yes, he was. Hey! Oh, yes, he was. Out of all the souls across the country, for the last 30 years that I've known him that have received the Holy Ghost and come off of drugs and come off of all kinds of ill-reputed lifestyles for the Lord to come and fill his babies with the Holy Ghost. Oh, what a difference a day makes. My God, my God. So, uh, I guess I'm going to try for a few minutes to say something. I loved Elder Michael White was my brother. Amen. We played, talked, prayed, fasted, cried, and sometimes lived together. Amen. And I know none of us are perfect. I know I'm not. But I tell you one thing. He loved God. A very wise man said, doesn't matter how you start, but it really matters how you finish. You know how he finished? He finished fasting and loving to fast. He finished working with souls and preaching the gospel. He finished preparing for revival. Hallelujah. And I don't even know if he knew he was going to get there, but he sure was preparing for revival 
Amen. So I thank the Lord for that man and those that have poured into his life. Some weren't able to be here today. Amen. But they have poured into his life and they too love him. Amen. And we're all going to miss uh, Elder Michael. Uh, he got the new name Hurricane. But it started off as Jawbone. Jawbone White. In the book of Acts, chapter number one, to save time, I'm going to just read one, um, two verses, 10 and 11. 10 and 11, but God, God I'm telling you the truth. The Bible reads, Acts 1 and 10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. You may be seated. I'm going to, for a few minutes, by the grace of God, speak from this subject, stargazers. The stargazers. Here in Luke's writing, he addresses his second letter to Theophilus. And in this letter, he reminds Theophilus of the things that he had written to him before. In his first writing in the Gospel of Luke, he wanted to give his two cents into all the things that people were saying about Jesus. A lot of people are saying a lot of things about Jesus. They got a lot of opinions. Luke said, let me give you my account, my opinion. And the Bible says when he began to write, he wrote concerning how the Lord sent an angel to bring forth the forerunner, John the Baptist. And then he sent an angel to bring forth Christ's message to Mary. When the message went to uh, John's parents, Elizabeth, Zacharias, he did not believe the message. And because of his unbelief, Gabriel said, you're going to be dumb until it happened. He took his speech from him so he couldn't say a word. Coming out of the house of God and he couldn't praise and do anything but make motions because he didn't believe God. A lot of people coming in and out the church can't really praise God because of their unbelief. But the Bible says that the Aunt Gabriel also went to Mary, Joseph, and witnessed to them the account that should happen to them about six months later. And of course, you know, Mary became with child also. When she heard about Elizabeth, she went to see her. And the Bible says that when John heard the voice of Mary, the Holy Ghost quickened in her body. And guess what happened? She was filled with the Holy Ghost. Here she was carrying the Holy Ghost in John, and then the quickening filled her with the Holy Ghost. And when they asked the question, when the child was born, what should his name be? And they wanted to name him after his daddy. His mother said, no, no, John. 
And they looked at her like she was crazy. What's going on here that you don't want to name him after his daddy? But the Bible says that Zach, he agreed. And soon as he agreed, his mouth opened. Soon as he became a believer of what God was doing, his tongue was loosed. And he was filled with the Holy Ghost. It takes us to believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. It takes us to believe the true story. I know we hear a lot of stuff, but Luke wanted to make sure that we didn't believe all the hype that we're hearing about Christ. He wanted them to know, amen, concerning this Jesus Amen. Even though he was not readily accepted by the religious order, he was about God's business. And I would say to many of us, amen, we have to realize that we're not necessarily going to be accepted by all of those that call themselves sanctified, amen, <laughs> and filled with the Holy Ghost. Let's loan the, the Christian world. Amen. But one thing we have to make sure of is we are believers in him. The Bible says, amen, that Mary and Martha were able to rejoice that day, amen, because of what they were doing for God. The blessings of God, that wonderful thing that Mary was caught carrying in her womb, amen, the son of God, God manifested soon in the flesh was going to bring salvation to a dying world. And look at what God does, amen. God does not go, amen, and bring his salvation to the great religious orders of today, amen. He goes to the place, amen, where the people were counted as being ignorant, Amen, rebellious and, and heathen. He went to Galilee, amen, and found some people there, amen, that were considered to be untrusting, amen, and considered to be bad folk, amen, folk that you didn't want to invite to dinner. He went to Galilee, amen, and found people that were doing all kinds of things that were unethical, Amen. And he took the gospel to Galilee. Amen. And the Bible says, amen, when he took the gospel to Galilee, amen, the religious order began to get quite upset because that he went to the Galileans. Amen. And you know what happens even today? Amen. People get upset. Amen. When God comes to people like you and I. Amen. Because we in ourselves are not really worthy of the salvation that God had brought. Amen. We got so much baggage, amen, in our closet, so many skeletons in our closet. There is nothing really good about us, amen, that Christ should desire us. Amen. But it's the goodness of the Lord, amen, because God has a plan and man has a plan. Man's plan puts man on high. Amen. But God's plan is to find somebody that know that you need somebody greater than than you, uh, amen, to do something wonderful in your life, amen. So he couldn't go to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, amen. He couldn't go to those that thought they had it all together, amen. He had to go to a place where, amen, people were crooked and messed up and people were hurting one another and backbiting one another and troubling one another where people couldn't really trust in the life that they were living uh, and they had to have somebody to help them. There's one bondage in Rome, amen, but there's another bondage in your own home, amen. There's another bondage in your marriage. There's another bondage in your children, amen. And Jesus went into the places, amen, where bondage had people all messed up. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that he came to my house, amen, to find me as messed up as I was, amen. There's one thing that White and I had in common, uh, we were both messed up uh, and we knew it. Uh, hallelujah. 
we really needed a savior. Some people, amen, are squeaky clean. You don't need a savior, but we really needed a savior. We needed somebody, amen, to help us and to bless us. Uh, we weren't turning around, amen, looking at folk, amen, trying to be sophisticated uh, or churchy. No, no, no. We weren't trying to be churchy. Amen. All the churchy folk are dressed up looking pumped and clear. Amen. And looking like uh, nobody bothers me. Uh, but we went to church, amen, looking like uh, we needed somebody to help us uh, and to pray for us. Uh, we went with our tears in our eyes. Uh, we went with our brows, amen, scrunched up because uh, we know we weren't worthy of the place uh, that we had now encountered. Uh, so of God and friends, I want to tell you today, amen, you got to realize that it had not been for the Lord huh, that was on your side. If it had not been for God, huh, where would you be? Uh, the Bible says, the Bible says in the text, I'm going to get there now. The Bible says in the text, amen, Jesus is giving them instructions huh, concerning what they are to do. Amen. They were go to Jerusalem huh, and they were to wait until they endued with power from on high. Holy Ghost power. He told them to go and wait there for the power. Amen. But the Bible says he's talking to these folk and a lot of these folk, guess what, are Galileans. That's right. Peter was a heathen Galilean. Hallelujah. All of them that he chose, James and John, hallelujah, they were all heathens out of Galilee. He chose 12 and one of them was a devil and they all were Galileans. They were not respected, highly respected. Hallelujah. But they were God's choice. Somebody didn't even know you would even be saved. Let's long be in the house of God praising him because you were not their choice but you were God's choice. And the Bible says as he spoke to them, amen, he tells them what to do and he tells them how they are to be a witness for him uh, uh, even unto the uttermost parts of the world. And the Bible says when he had finished speaking uh, he was taken up from them. Uh, now can I throw this in here? Uh, some of us gotta realize none of us came here to stay. Uh, uh, I'm trying to do the work right now uh, of John the Baptist. Uh, hallelujah. I'm trying to preach the gospel uh, of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm trying to let somebody know, amen, of somebody that can save and deliver you no matter what your condition is or what you're in. I'm not trying to point people to me. I'm trying to point everybody to Jesus that they might be delivered and set free. I'm not the one. I'm not the one you should trust in. I'm just an old Galilean. I'm not the one that you could pat on the back. I'm just an old heathen. I'm not the one that you should bow down to. I'm just an old sinner. Hallelujah. But I know a man from Galilee. Hallelujah. That you can put your trust in and he will set you free. Give God some praise somebody. My God, my God. Uh, the Bible says uh, he was taken up from them out of their eyes uh, into a cloud and they could not see him uh, anymore. And you know what? This is not the first homecoming going uh, I've been to. And it's always the same thing. We have powerful people of God uh, that have ministered into our lives uh, and oftentimes we did not give them the credence uh, that we should have concerning the word that they left on record. And then when it's all done and they lay before us in a service like this, then we got so many wonderful things to say. But can I tell you something? Like White as Watkins, I don't care what you have to say about me. What do you think about Jesus? I don't care if I ever become your best friend. What do you think about Jesus? I don't care if 